Coming up on Ag Week TV, harvest is starting in the Western Corn Belt. We'll look at yield prospects in South Dakota and Minnesota. As the land dries up, people think about irrigation out in Western North Dakota. The drought is forcing cattle producers to cull deeper and travel farther for feed. And the new Precision Ag Center at SDSU brings innovation to the region. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. This week we're at the Big Iron Farm Show at the fairgrounds in West Fargo, North Dakota. Every year more than 60,000 attendees come to the show to see demonstrations and visit exhibits covering more than 200 acres of ground. Plus farmers attend training and educational seminars, get health screenings, and network. This year's field demos included an autonomous grain cart and speakers looked at topics from farm policy to land and grain markets. Topping our ag news, the Biden administration is taking action to address concentration within the meatpacking industry and ensure food security with the rising cost of food. The White House says about half of the overall increase in grocery store prices can be attributed to beef, pork, and poultry. Beef and pork have seen a double-digit increase in price in the last couple of months. They point to packer concentration, with four packers controlling from 55 to 85 percent of the business and say it raises concerns about profiteering. To help address consolidation, USD is strengthening the Packers and Stockyards Act. There will also be more focus on price discovery, country of origin labeling of meat, and expanded meat packer capacity among small processors. Ex Secretary Tom Vilsack says Packers are making record profits while farmers and ranchers lose money. Cattle producers are slowly seeing some progress on increasing competition and transparency in the marketplace. USDA recently started releasing formula contract information on cattle. This was one of the remedies agreed upon by cattle groups. Cattlemen hope it's a partial victory, but with only a few reports released, it's too early to tell. We just don't know yet how that's going to work, but more information's got to be good. I hope it's in a form that's usable, that, that producers can can maybe glean something from it. Noble says after the NCBA convention, he's also optimistic about their 75% rule to increase the negotiated cash cattle traded. The Packers signed their agreement to have their data analyzed for the Packer participation silo, uh, part of that, the 75% rule. Packing capacity is also advancing with expansion plans at Tama, Iowa, and new medium-sized plants announced in Iowa and Nebraska. Drought-stricken cattle producers in northern North Dakota are making challenging counter moves. As Mikkel Pates reports, they're selling off animals earlier than they'd like and traveling farther than they want for feed. And I don't know that any of this would have made any grain in it. Jeff Kuntz raises cattle in north central North Dakota. The region has been hit hard by drought and on this day, Kuntz is cutting another farmer's droughted out cornfield 40 miles from home to use for livestock feed for the winter. You see the corn in the windrow, but I don't believe that it would have actually made mature corn. And I'm not sure what his uh, insurance company, if they zeroed it all completely or give him a yield, it wasn't gonna make enough of a yield to, to combine for him. The Kuntz Ranch usually runs about 300 cows. He hopes this corn stover helps him get through the winter, but he's had to sell off 140 cow-calf pairs. We're just hitting the time of year when they're having to do some drastic changes. Jim Ziegler owns Lake Region Livestock, a sale barn at Devil's Lake. This summer has been a busy one for him. Ziegler says they held weekly cattle sales through the summer rather than every other week. People are weaning cattle early. They're taking cows off of grass. Uh, they're culling early. Uh, doing different things. Come on, princess. If the drought continues, the government likely will come up with loan and feed assistance programs, but in the meantime, Ziegler expects his sale barn to stay busy into the fall. Basically, most of the calf crop will be gone from the state before Christmas, I would guess. The upside is that cattle prices are higher than they were a year ago. In north central North Dakota, this is Michael Pates for Ag Week. Harvest is underway as we continue the Ag Week corn and soybean tour. I talked to Terry Schultz with Mustang Seeds about yield prospects in South Dakota. We started off talking about the variability of drought in the state. Variability on this crop is probably more than I've really seen in the last 30 years. It varies in the field, not even, you know, obviously county by county. So Terry, what are you thinking the statewide corn yield is going to be like this year in South Dakota? Corn yields, I, 
you know, I believe are probably going to be 25 to 30 percent off of uh, trend yield for our area. I think we're going to see everywhere from zero to 250. We did get some late season rains. Did they help at all to fill the crop? You know, they're probably going to help a little bit on test weight, which will result in some yield, but it's not going to give us as much boost as uh, I think it probably did the late soybeans. And are you concerned about standability of the corn? Standability is going to definitely be a concern. We see, uh, you know, these new genetics, uh, we strive for high yields, and when it doesn't have moisture, it pulls that from the middle of the stalk, causes anthracnose. And what about soybeans? What are you thinking yields are going to be like there? Soybean yields, I think, are going to probably be off by 30% off of what we would expect for a, a bumper crop. And we're already harvesting some of the crop, and it's drying down fast, isn't it? Yes. You know, as we seen last year, it got very dry. Um, you know, you get below 10% into the nines. That's very difficult, and we're going to see that again this year. Terry Schultz joining us with Mustang Seeds. I'm Ag Week reporter Noah Fish, and we're in southeast Minnesota today, and I'm with uh, Michael Cruz of the University of Minnesota Extension. Uh, Michael, what kind of conditions has this area seen as far as weather? Yeah, for sure. So compared to some of the other places around the state, uh, we actually caught some pretty timely rains this year. So when everybody else is kind of talking about drought right now, we actually are doing relatively okay. We're a lot more on the wet side than some of the other people in the state are. Compared to an average year, yields are going to be down this year probably? Yeah, for sure. Yields are going to be down around here. And I think one of the big things that farmers are going to see is that yields are variable, both for soybeans and for corn decent yields around here but we definitely lost on our top end. Uh, Michael what are the conditions looking like for the corn crops? Yeah very similar to the soybean situation obviously the corn was uh, kind of went through a few more colder uh, seasons than the uh, than the soybeans did but the variability is going to be the the key thing that you're going to see in corn crops as well. Even though the corn ears might be variable if the stand is there the yield is going to be okay. Again we're going to lose on our top end but generally speaking we're going to be okay. Well thanks Michael I appreciate it. I'm I'm Ag Week reporter Noah Fish in Mabel, Minnesota on the Ag Week Corn and Soybean Crop Tour. Coming up on Ag Week TV from Big Iron. Western North Dakota family is back into irrigation, this time taking water out of the famed McCluskey Canal. Thank you to our 2021 sponsors, Kelsine, Aqua Yield, Corteva AgriScience, KT Irrigation and Ag Country Farm Credit Services. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you. From top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Make the Superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Every dollar counts on the farm, especially in this year's dry conditions. There's a new technology that uses nanoparticles for more efficient delivery of nutrients to your crops. Rose Dunn gives you a look at how nanoliquid technology works. AquaYield was first introduced to this region in 2018 by Ericsson Custom Operations. Aside from the excitement of offering a new technology that works, growers across the Midwest are achieving higher yields and a better crop while reducing input costs through nanoliquid technology. No, no special handling, easy to use, four ounces per acre. So really low use rate. You can put it in furrow, you can foliar apply it, and I mean really all from between three dollars to possibly eight dollars on a per acre cost to you to, to try it. So very inexpensive. To learn more about how Aqua Yield works, contact Jim Erickson at ECO at the number or email on your screen. Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Week. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Sweep's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance, and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Sweep today at harvestsweep.com. 
Superior Grain Equipment offers you the industry's best dryer and grain handling equipment. So make the superior choice and get higher quality grains, test weights, and prices while using half the energy. Superior Grain Equipment. The Garrison Diversion was built in western North Dakota mainly for flood control and water management, but its lofty irrigation goals were slower in coming. Mikkel Pates talked to a grower who is constructing a new system to combat the current drought years. And Mikkel, the system still has some considerable upside potential, right? Well, yes. Irrigation was always part of the original plan for Garrison, but policies over which crops could be irrigated and the wet years of the 1990s and 2000s slowed development until the last 15 years. Overall, development is at a much smaller scale than originally planned. We jokingly call this uh, project 007. Paul Anderson isn't part of a top secret mission, but he calls his irrigation project 007 because that's how many hundreds of a mile he is from the head gates of the McCluskey Canal. Approximately 35 feet from the canal. The canal is part of the garrison diversion. Anderson started irrigating with water from it after the 80s drought, then stopped in 2014 during the wet years. But the need is back. Seeing, you know, that the dry years are here for a while, and so we're seeing the imperativeness of having to get the irrigation going again. Anderson Farms an average size farm for the area. He's anxious to get about 600 acres of it back into irrigation over the next year or so. This year it's probably worth 120 bushels to the acre. On an average year, it might be only better you buy 50 to 70. On a, on a really wet year, it may not have any benefit, but it takes the variability out of it. Paul's dad, Rick, has served on the Garrison Diversion Board since 1986. He's stayed out of the vote on Paul's project approval, of course, but he's happy his family will get access to the canal water with an eye toward taking the risk of drought out of farming in a semi-arid climate. We're hoping so because it's, it's an investment to, uh, to try to make this thing work. So they're seeing life-giving water adding to the life of their family farm for generations to come. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Cole Harbor, North Dakota. The USDA has accepted offers for more than 2.5 million acres for enrollment in this year's Grasslands Conservation Reserve Program sign-up. This is double last year's enrollment and brings the total acres enrolled across all CRP sign-ups to more than 5.3 million acres, which surpasses the agency's 4 million acre goal. FSA Administrator Zach Ducheneau attributes this to changes they made to CRP programs this spring. Offering producers a, a better suite of incentives including increased rental rates to participate in CRP programs. FSA accepted 2,250 acres of grasslands for CRP enrollment in Minnesota, 404,000 in South Dakota, and 22,700 in North Dakota. Ducheneau says the interest in working lands conservation leaves room for innovation with other programs like the Conservation Reserve Easement Program to enlist non-traditional partners. Ahead on Ag Week TV, how soybean growers can help slow the spread of a devastating pest. You can get the field results you want in varying conditions with the flexibility of the summer's VRT Renegade. Featuring on-the-fly blade angle adjustment from 0 to 19 degrees. And if you want the simplicity of a super coulter with the ability to move a little dirt, you'll love the all-new summer's super coulter samurai. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about North America's broadest line of tillage equipment and other products from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. Kevin Johnson, president of Gateway Building Systems. I started with Gateway back in 1974 on the construction side. The next year went into the office and sales, and in 1977 became part owner. We've got a great team of salespeople, designers, project managers. The key to Gateway is our people. Our customers appreciate the quality and reliability. I know you didn't ask me to, but I grabbed your mail for you while you were out of town. Uh, this one was marked urgent, so I opened it for you. 
It's your bank statement. Are all those charges right? I highlighted the bottom of page three where you can sign up for e-statements. This isn't my mail. <laughs> e-statements with Cornerstone Bank. Keep nosy neighbors at bay by switching today. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. What can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. Some rains fell early this week in the region, but will this trend continue and slow the harvest? Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Love this time of the year, the weather forecast, the weather starts changing, the patterns begin to get into a more of a pre-winter pattern. This week we'll be dealing with a great big area of low pressure moving out into the Great Plains, which will take us, first of all, this weekend, some hot weather going quite cool, and then toward the end of this two-week period, back to excessively warm weather, or even, you might say, unusually warm weather toward the end of October, as the big low is replaced by a big high. Let me show you how it's going to play out. Right now, we've got a little surge of hot weather coming up this first weekend of the period. Jet stream going way up north. Temperatures up around 90 degrees on Sunday. That won't last that long as the, the ridge crashes. By the time we get to Tuesday, starting to see this deep area of low pressure forming. Now, this low is likely to cause fairly widespread rains in the northern plains, and it's also going to really pump up the heat, not only into the eastern U.S., but up into the the Canadian Maritimes, where they will see some, well, I would call it uh, out of the ordinary heat for this time of year. The real heat, the 90s, will quickly get uh, pushed down to the south, get squelched down to the Gulf Coast and into Texas, where it tends to linger this time of year. And we'll start seeing some intrusions of legitimately cold weather. By that, this time of year, we're meaning high temperatures, not much warmer than about freezing. And some of that will drop down south of Hudson Bay, south of the Yukon but it won't get much further south than that. As we get toward the end of the week, another little low will build through. Not as much cold with that one, but it could bring up perhaps a little bit of precipitation to some areas and will do the job of further uh, keeping the uh, hot weather down south. As we translate into the second week of the period, this uh, goings on in Alaska will result in a big ridge of high pressure to start building over the western U.S. feeding up into the northern plains. And that's again as we get toward the end of September and the start of October. Temperatures may be as warm as the 80s or at least around 80 degrees coming up across the Dakotas and Minnesota, while that first wave of chilly weather will get uh, splattered along the eastern seaboard and the eastern maritimes which have been quite warm during the first week and it looks like that warm weather much above average will last into at least the early part of October. The biggest bet for rain in the first week, September 19th through 25th, is going to come with this big low. Now, there will be showers outside of this, but somewhere in North Dakota, Minnesota, and uh, southern Ontario, Manitoba, there will be some substantial one and two inch rains that come out of that. So a lot of thunder shower activity along the Gulf Coast. Some rain coming down into coastal areas of the Pacific Northwest the second week as we translate into October does not look particularly rainy around the region. At North Star Ag, we're more than your short line machinery dealer. We're also full service and we're farmers first. That means we know it's not about what's best, but what's best for your farm. Whether you're planting, growing, or harvesting, we're there for all your equipment, parts, and service needs. And we've been doing it since 2009, with the largest inventory and availability in the area. Check us out at northstar-ag.com or call us at 701-361-4790. Don't miss out on the equipment you'll need next season. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer, has early order discounts on its full line of powerful, efficient, new Case IH equipment, including tractors, combines, and self-propelled sprayers. Get a great deal and ensure that you have the latest in productivity and technology. Supply chains are tight. Contact your Titan Machinery dealership today and find out how much you can save by ordering ahead. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH equipment experts. 
we have products that no other companies have. That gives us a bit of an advantage and a bit of an edge and it provides some security to our customer base that we've been here, we're here to stay, and we want to still provide these new innovations to the customers today. It's cold granulated products where we're putting together multiple nutrients. We've got products in our micro essentials lineup that contain sulfur and zinc, and we also have products on our potash side, which contain boron, which is a newer product for us, which is called Aspire. Systems way good work, good pay in a good life. Let's me live my way. Good work, good pay in a good life. Trans systems way good work, good pay in a good life. Let's me live my way. It's a trans systems way good work. They say when the going gets tough, the tough get going. At OK Tire, we're here to keep you going. From Firestone tires and replacements to retreads and even Firestone tracks, we have you covered. Our certified Firestone experts are ready to get you back up and running, no matter if you're on site or in the field, saving you time and money. OK Tire, we keep the tough going. Egg Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Soybean growers are being urged to test for soybean cyst nematode. SCN is the most destructive soybean pathogen in the U.S., causing yield losses estimated at a billion dollars across the country. It can be even higher in hot, dry years. SCN was first found in the southeast corner of North Dakota in 2003, but is expanding west and north across the state. It currently is found in two dozen counties. So NDSU plant pathologist Sam Markell says it's important to stay ahead of it. He says SCN can be in fields without causing obvious above ground symptoms, so it is very hard to detect. Many growers may not be aware they have it for several years until they start to see significant yield loss. The North Dakota Soybean Council has supported an SCN sampling program for growers since 2013. We know soybean cyst is going to be a big issue. I mean, Iowa and Illinois, they've proved that to us. And so they're trying to be really proactive and get out there and get growers to identify it. And then, and then you can manage it, you know, and you'll, you'll prevent that yield loss by managing it. Growers can pick up a sampling bag at their local extension office and send it back in for results. The Soybean Council covers the cost of lab fees. Big Iron continues to bring farmers in the region the latest information on farming trends plus cutting edge technology to help them on their farm. We talked to some of the industry leaders at the show. So what we're kind of known for Total Egg is our custom built fertilizer systems. One of our new products this year that we are um, selling is called Calcine. Any farmer who has high salt levels in their fields, this is going to be their solution. It's going to take the calcium right out of the soil matrix and it's going to improve your, your soil health. Lang Supply sells fertilizer injection knives and replacement kits for chisel plows, field cultivators, and dual banding boots. The way our knife is designed, the upper body that bolts onto the shank, our leading edge of that is higher than the trailing edge and it forces soil back into the slot so it seals it up. We're sealing that anhydrous up before the dry is actually being placed. The Steffes Group has seen a hot land and equipment market this year and expects the trend to continue. I don't see anything in the marketplace uh, that's going to really, uh, what would you say, change what's going on in the machinery world and especially the land events. Uh, there's just not a lot of land that's available and these prices are continuing to be strong. Bridget Riedel of Corteva AgriSciences, she hasn't seen product shortages like this in her 25-year career. There are an awful lot of supply shortages in the crop protection business this year, so I would make sure that I am talking to my supplier right now for my glyphosate, my glufosinate, some of my phenoxy products just to make sure I've secured supply. Advanced Grain Handling System specializes in dryers, but also installs bins and other grain handling equipment. Well, one thing here at Advanced Grain Handling Systems that we offer that no other companies offer is, we start at the design stages from ground zero all the way to the finish, but we also include all the stages along the way. Dirt work and come right in to do the cement and build everything up and right down to the electrical work on everything. So it's a one-stop shop. Still ahead, Precision Ag gets a big boost at South Dakota State.
Shatter loss. It's been plaguing producers ever since the corn header was invented. Leading Edge Industries has the solution with Operation Harvest Week. Proven to reduce shatter loss up to 85% without pulling in excessive trash. The kits simply replace the deck plates and gathering chains on your corn header. Operation Harvest Sweep's patented design saves multiple bushels per acre, increasing feeding performance, and drastically decreasing volunteer corn. Order Operation Harvest Sweep today at harvestsweep.com. Saline can leave a field unproductive, so agronomist Greg Johnson was excited when he found out about a product called Calcene. Well, basically, calcium, they spray it over the top. Uh, there needs to be calcium carbonate in the soil to, to start a reaction. That reaction, in a nutshell, is basically able to dislodge the sodium ion from the soil particle and allow the calcium to uh, take its place on the soil part particle. And then we're able to flush those, those, the sodium out of the soil profile and down. And at some point, we will start seeing things like this, where this was black, and now, we're, now we've got corn growing, and that's an awesome story. Farmer Neil Johnson couldn't agree more. It is worth the investment. I mean, we've got growth, we've got things that are happening. Because if we didn't do anything, we'd have nothing. We'd be losing more and it'd probably be leaching out further. Between the drain tile and calcine, you see now that we have vegetation. Contact Jim Erickson or visit calcine.us. Go beyond the headlines with an Ag Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. The $46 million Raven Precision Agriculture Center at South Dakota State University was dedicated last Saturday. South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem says the facility allows collaboration on precision ag technology within SDSU and with industry. The partnership that we have going on in South Dakota between education, state government, and industry, and the passion of these students is really going to pay off in the long run for each and every farmer out there that's looking for more efficiency and higher yields. The state-of-the-art classrooms and labs benefit researchers and students. The technology here is so much more advanced in the building than what we had previously, and it kind of bridges the gap between industry and our school. Ag Dean John Killifer says that Precision Ag students will be able to help agriculture tackle challenges such as feeding a growing population sustainably. With this Precision Ag major, the first in the nation, you know, our students are coming out with this really unique blend of knowledge that's really going to allow them to be the leaders in this precision agriculture that is really the future of ag agriculture in our country. The facility was supported by private donations and the South Dakota Legislature. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV here from Big Iron. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have yourself a great and safe week.